Joining me now for more from Liverpool in the UK is Francesco Rizzuto. He's the Dean and uh, Head of the School of Law at Liverpool Hope University. Welcome to the programme. Francesco, just uh, your thoughts on uh, what's been happening in Lampedusa just this week alone, where we've seen uh, that the number of migrants there outnumber the residents on that island. Well, I think it's it's quite extraordinary, really. Um, you're absolutely right. The island has been overwhelmed. Uh, the infrastructure can't cope. There are more migrants than there are people on there. And of course, the big fear is that, that more will come uh, and the island can't cope. So what's happened to that little island is clearly very, very unfortunate. And the Italian government has to act. The Italian, yeah, they have to act, and uh, we know the um, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen is visiting uh, next week. What could that change? Her visit there. Well, she's there as we speak, I believe, uh, following the Italian media with the Italian Prime Minister to witness for herself <laughs> the dire situation on, on on the island. What will change? Well, I think that. Other than bearing witness, the real changes have to happen elsewhere in Europe, and that is in Paris and in Berlin. And the Italian government clearly needs help in dealing with the crisis. Italy has had to accommodate 126,000 uh, uh, migrants this year, some illegal, some legal, if you like, some economic, some political. And it's distinguishing between the two that's very difficult. But clearly the Italians need help from the European Union and those key states in particular. And Francesco, uh, sorry to interrupt, but they have needed help for so long. This is not the first time this, we've, you know, we've been here before, maybe not at these numbers, but uh, come on, where is the plan there to help the, uh, Italy? Well, where is the EU plan? There is no EU plan. And this is a massive failure by the European Union to actually deal with a major uh, uh, challenge for all of us in Europe. Unfortunately, the, the present Italian government has allied with two governments, Poland and Hungary, that have actually vetoed the agreement that they came to, yeah. uh, or the rest of them came to, uh, two months ago. Exactly. So I'm just looking at that right now. Poland condemns the EU migrant relocation plan. So what hope is there? If they're not going to get agreement with all the members there, and you've got Poland and Hungary just blocking, was it uh, back in June that, uh, yeah. that they announced the uh, European Union well, to relocate migrants in asylum seekers within the bloc, mandatory solidarity, and they said no. That's that's absolutely right. Look, uh, the Poles have got their own problem by virtue of the fact that people in the foreign ministry have been selling uh, visas, apparently, uh, to migrants through their embassies abroad. But put that aside, look, frankly, the idea of uh, 26, 27 state solidarity is an absolute nonsense. Uh, the Italians, the French, the Germans, the Spaniards, the willing, if you like, have to go it alone and decide on a policy to deal with the immediate crisis. And that does mean sharing the burden with Italy. It's not just about giving Italy the money, it's actually helping them with the resources and actually how to process these people. Uh, and, and frankly, people like Poland and Hungary have simply got to be ignored uh, because they're not gonna help at all. Um, so that's the immediate challenge. The medium term challenge is actually looking at changing the legal basis. Dublin, the Dublin Accords, uh, where the first state has to deal with them, simply don't work anymore. They were written for another era. So, so that's got to change. But of course, if I can add, the real problem is that in these countries, there is pressure from the far right, anti-immigrant pressure. Mm -hmm. So if you like, governments that could be more tolerant are really fearful of what, what could happen if they adopt a line that, that actually tries to deal with the migrant problem in a way that acknowledges we need migrants, but we need to process them and deal with it properly. And just to conclude this bit, uh, of course, we have a problem with this, the states from which these countries are leaving. Right. Now, remember, under international law, states uh, should not be able to stop their people leaving. However, we do have a problem in Africa and we do have a problem in North Africa because it's plain that those states, even if they come to an agreement with Europe and the frontline states in particular, are simply incapable of actually managing flows through their territories and controlling their own frontiers so that the process can be more manageable for everybody. Francesco, it's such a 
Big and a complex subject, but uh, really great to get your um, analysis uh, on this today. Thank you for your time. Pleasure.